Hello, I'm John Lenz, and this is the second workshop in the machine learning series. Uh, today, I'm going to go over gradient descent and learning rates. So this is uh, necessary to understand if you want to conceptualize how neural network models learn and how they actually produce the adjustment which you use to, which you use to uh, tweak the weights uh, through backpropagation. So let's just get right into it. So this is sort of a higher level overview of what gradient descent is. Um, now, if you remember in, a, in the previous video, I talked about how the weights are actually uh, randomly initialized. Um, so if you look on this graph, which is the which has weights on the x the, uh, all the possible weights on the x axis and the loss that you get using that weight on the y axis, uh, since uh, the weight is randomly initialized, you don't really know where you're going to start off on this graph. Um, in this case, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, we're starting off here. Um, but you could luck out and start off somewhere very close to the local minimum, but you don't really quite know uh, where you're going to start. Um, so in this case, we start here. And um, what actually happens is you compute the gradient at that point. In other words, you compute the slope at that point. And since your goal is to go to the local minimum where the loss on the y-axis is minimized, then you want to move down the slope. So in this case, you want to move in the downward direction, which is here, by one unit. And then you do that again by another unit, and you continue to uh, move downward until you reach the local minimum. Now, one thing that you might notice is that this is not the local minimum. This is right here. Well, if I was to move one more unit to or downward, um, I would actually miss the local minimum. And uh, that's called overshooting. And that's a problem when the unit that you're traveling is too big or too large. Um, so this sort of leads in perfectly to the next topic, which is learning rates. And that is the name of this unit that you travel. Now, the problem is, like I mentioned, is that if your learning rate is too large, then you risk overshooting. So the obvious solution to that is, OK, so I'll just reduce the learning rate. Well, there's a problem with that as well, and that is it's going to take you much longer to reach the local minimum because you're moving in baby steps. Um, now, one thing that I forgot to mention is that learning rates usually range between 0.1 and 0.001. So an example of a large learning rate, of course, would be 0.1, um, which would just you really risk overshooting. And at 0.001, it would just take forever. Uh, down here, I put the I guess you could say uh, the equation to generate uh, the new weight or like the, the adjustment. This is how you um, generate that. You take the current weight, so the weight that you already uh, started with, um, you subtract that by your learning rate, which is somewhere between these numbers, um, and you multiply it by the gradient that you computed. So um, while I mentioned that having a large learning rate and a small learning rate are both bad uh, for different reasons, or rather they have their pros and cons, you can actually get the best of both worlds by starting off with a large learning rate. So initially, you're learning much faster. But then after each iteration, you reduce the learning rate. So it becomes more and more accurate. What I would like to talk about is batch gradient descent versus stoch uh, stochastic gradient descent. Now, batch gradient descent requires the entire model to run. So every single um, node or neuron uh, has, to, or has to be, you know, in use uh, in order to compute the final um, uh, you know, guess. And then you use that guess to calculate the error, to find the loss function, uh, to find the derivative of the, or the gradient of the loss function in order to find the adjustment values to tweak your model. Um, but that can be you know, very inefficient if you have a huge model with tons of data. Um, you know, as opposed to batch gradient descent, you can just use stochastic gradient descent, which won't give you the you know, accurate um, uh, gradient or, or slope, but it's a good a good enough estimate to the point where you would prefer to use stochastic gradient descent over the inefficiencies of batch uh, for a large model. And uh, you know, essentially, what you have to do is just take random subsets of data as opposed to all of it, uh, like you would with batch gradient descent. So uh, that's basically a high-level overview of you know gradient descent.
as a whole. Um, stay tuned for, the, for a, a future video where I'll go more into depth about computing the gradient um, and, uh, you know, like I mentioned, gradient descent in more than just two dimensions. So I you know, hope you really like this workshop um, and I hope you, you got something out of this. Uh, so yeah, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.